We're working on this Ego line trimmer with the power load feature. You're supposed to be able to put your line through, press this button, and have it spool up the line. The problem is this one's not feeding the line in. And when you press this button, you're supposed to hear this ratcheting action where the internal spool is turning, but this outer one is not. And you can see this spins the outer spool. So we need to dig into this and figure out what's wrong with it. All the other videos I've seen just talk about cleaning this out. There's no debris left in here. So I think we got to dig in a little further, pull this snap ring out. And now we do have some debris behind that. So could that be our issue? Also notice there's a little keyway in here. And there's a bit of a ridge there. Not much of a key, but. Wonder if that's worn down and not uh, grabbing on that. That would make sense because this piece is fixed in place Well, that's a bearing in there, so does that really matter? Yeah, it does spin on that. And I don't think that's supposed to spin. This piece actually looks like plastic. Yeah, and it it looks like the plastic is supposed to have a, a built-in key to it, and it looks like it's just been sheared. I almost wonder if I could try to cut a little slot in there and fit a piece of metal in at least to test it, but probably better to just order a new part. So, looking at the parts diagram, this plastic flange is actually part of the motor and it's like 73 bucks to get a whole new motor. Pretty crappy for them to not sell this part separately when something that's plastic with a built-in key on it, which you would think is designed as a failure part, uh, that they don't sell this part separately. Should only be like a few bucks for that even if it was 10 bucks. I mean, come on. So I'm going to see if we can fit this in here and then maybe use the bearing cut out as a guide. Put a small drill bit down there. If we can cut into that plastic a little and find a little piece of metal to use as an actual key in there, maybe we can get it to hold. Cut out a little piece of metal, but that's only about, oh, 47, 48, and that fits pretty much flush in there. We need almost twice that depth, maybe 080, 090. You got to find a scrap that's a bit thicker. Found a 3 8 washer 
I find that washers seem to be varying in thickness. I don't know why, but it's about 98. If we can cut a piece out of that, it might just work. So I got that piece in there. Definitely sticks out a bit. Let's see if we can cut into that plastic enough to make that fit as a key. Well, we've definitely dug into it. Little touch up with a knife might do it. It's definitely going to need a, a bit more cut out for that to get in there. Do want it sort of a tight fit if possible, and then maybe we can sort of hammer it down there. But I'm already coming through the inside a little. So this half-baked plan is we've got a slot somewhat cut out in that plastic piece. We've got a little key that we made by uh, dremeling and filing to about the right shape. And now we're going to heat it up get it kind of hot and see if we can stick it in there to sort of melt into that hub. Is this a good idea? Probably not. Well, it went in. I was hoping with the heat it would mold itself into place and give it a little bit stronger hold since I don't have the right tools to accurately cut out a slot and something like that. Okay, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and cool down. still think it's a really bad design having a plastic part like that. Well, <laughs> the key came right out. Maybe the thing to do is put a little bit of super glue in there to hold it in place. Or maybe we just put this back together, see if it holds. Does that seem like it'll hold, is the question. Yeah, it does seem like it moves a little. Hoping there was enough plastic behind there that it would just bind up and just not be able to move further. And now it's jammed in there. I'm just afraid to glue it in there while it's in place. I don't want to glue the whole thing together because that'll make it really hard to get apart if we have to buy a new motor and get in here. And these spacers are not tight against the plastic, so the plastic can squish in a little. I think that's part of the problem, but I believe they do that to avoid this as really a bearing interface. And leave a little play in there so nothing's going to wear down. Well, I heated the piece up and pushed it a little further into the hub. Hopefully that would give it a little more bite in the plastic. Backed it up with some glue all around and let's go for it because I've got nothing else to try here. Snap ring is seated, definitely has that one-way ratchet feel to it now. It'll 
turn counterclockwise but not clockwise. Uh, so we need this. That. Washer. And our nut. Spring is a little bent, but who cares? Now let's see. That seems to operate the way it should. So then you're supposed to be able to just feed the line through it. Stretch it out so you got the same length in there and then we push the button and that worked don't know how long that's going to hold but that works for now and we know if it fails again we probably just have to get a whole new motor or call the company and complain that that little plastic part is all we really need and they should sell that separately because it's such a crappy design.